however, is more concerned with subatomic particles, like the quark. In 1964, Dr. Murray Gelman and George Zweig hypothesized that three small particles composed hundreds of larger particles. Gelman called the small particles quarks, coined after a line from James Joyce's novel, Finnegan's Wake. Quarks are assigned electric charges of positive two-thirds and negative one-third in units of the proton charge. The following table shows the charge distribution in different particles, with the proton having two two-thirds charges and one negative one-third charge, and the neutron having one two-thirds charge and two negative one-third charges, giving the proton a net charge of one and the neutron a net charge of zero. Six different flavors of quarks were predicted, each with a different mass. The following table outlines the names, measured masses, and charges of each flavor of quark. The six quarks are up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. And top and bottom used to be called truth and beauty. After Gelman and Zweig published their theory, the up and down quarks were discovered. In 1974, charm was discovered simultaneously at Brookhaven National Laboratory and the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center in the U.S. The bottom quark was discovered in 1977 at Fermi National Laboratory. Almost 20 years later, on March 2, 1995, the final quark of the six, the top quark, was observed at Fermi National Laboratory. The reason for the difficulty relating to its discovery was its extremely large mass compared to the other five quarks. All six quarks have now been observed. Quarks cannot be isolated due to their extremely small masses. Since they have electric charges, however, they have electromagnetic interactions and combine to form hadrons, which then bind together to form nuclei. Hadrons are colorless particles consisting of three quarks of different colors, a baryon, or of a quark-antiquark pair, a meson. Color charge, also known as strong charge, is a quantum number that determines participation in strong intramolecular interactions. Only gluons and quarks have color, which can be red, green, or blue, and each quark carries one color, while gluons are bicolored. A gluon is a carrier particle of strong interaction. There are eight different gluons with color charges. A lepton is a subatomic particle that, like the quark, has a spin of one half, but does not have a color charge and can bear only electric and weak, not strong, charges. The following table lists the six leptons, measured masses, and their antiparticles. The six leptons are the electron, muon, tau, electron neutrino, muon neutrino, and tau neutrino. Quarks and leptons are divided into three different generations of matter. Only the first generation, comprised of the up and down quarks and the electron and the electron neutrino leptons exist in elementary matter because they often arise from the decay of larger quarks and leptons. The diagram below illustrates the three generations of matter, including the six quarks and the six leptons. The standard model of fundamental particles and interactions has been created, showing <coughs> the six quarks and the six leptons as well as their properties of their interactions. Not just your commanding officer. I may not know what a quark is, although I know who he is, unfortunately. But I do know about particle accelerators. I took a course during my academy days. Particle accelerators, which have been used by particle physicists since the 1930s, are used to separate dip particles of different charges, as well as measure their momentums. There are two types of particle accelerators used the linear accelerator, and the circular accelerator. The linear accelerator is used for particles of energy in mega electron volts, and the circular accelerator is used for particles of energy in tera electron volts. As we can see in this schematic, there are two options of colliding, using a fixed target whereby the particles from the Cockcroft Walton hit the fixed target, or by colliding beams. This is done by releasing antiprotons from number 7 and particles from the cockcroft walton whereby the collider detector will determine what happens. Looking at the fixed target means, a charged particle is accelerated by the electric field in the accelerator which then collides with the target 
which can be in any of the three phases of matter. A detector determines the charge, momentum, etc. of the resulting particles. Looking at the colliding beam means, we find that two beams of high energy particles are forced to collide with one another. Since there is a large amount of kinetic energy in each of the particles, the resulting particle from the collision will have an even greater amount of kinetic energy and thus a higher mass. Due to the fact they have high momentums, the resulting wavelengths are short and thus make excellent probes. Now that we have seen how particles collide, it is important to know how they are accelerated. The accelerators speed up the charged particles by creating immense electrical fields to either attract or repel the particles. The field is moved down the accelerator and helps to push the particles along. As we see here, the particles on the top are positively charged and the particles on the bottom are negatively charged. The advantage of using the circular accelerator is that each time the particles pass through one of the accelerators, they are provided with high levels of energy and thus, after several rounds through the loop, the energy of the particle is much greater than that of a linear accelerator, which only provides acceleration once. Now that we know how the particles are accelerated, it is imperative to understand how physicists gather information from what occurs inside the accelerator. Once the particles either collide with one another or hit a target, known as an event, particle decay products are formed. In order to look at these PDPs, detectors products in either particle accelerator test different aspects of an event. Detectors can measure particle energies and momenta, as well as distinguish between varying particle types. Together, all of this information allows physicists to single out an individual particle to be studied, as all of this information is stored in a computer database, much like our own. I believe that while you were in Starfleet Academy, you too de developed a detector yourself. As we can see here, we have a colliding beam detector, below a fixed target detector, and to the bottom right, we see that detectors are divided into many components to test for special particle properties. Particles are only evident when they interact with the detector or decay into undetectable particles. Day, what a day, what a day, Dana. Yes, it was, sir. Ford, do you want your drink? Sure. Thank you. Mmm, looking on. good. So, what are your feelings on the day, Dana? Well, sir, being an android, I do not experience feelings. But unfortunately, the mission was unsuccessful because the anomaly turned out to be a computer malfunction. There was nothing wrong on the planet. We are currently real. On the next edition of Star Trek, The Next Generation. I'm Tyler and I played Commander William T. Riker. Hi, my name is Vikram and I played Lieutenant Commander LaForge. Hello, I'm the Stugmeister himself, Daryl Schneider, and I play Lieutenant Commander Data. Oh, it's time for some bloopers. The Borg? <laughs> <laughs> the Bohr? The Bohr? No, sir. The Bohr model of the atom was put forth by scientist Niels Bohr. It stated that electrons could not lose energy. Hey, <laughs> 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 calm down, boys. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Tyler? <laughs> no. Commander Data, what are you recording? I'm getting abnormal tricorder readings, Captain. Commander. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I screwed up on my Captain. Keep stopping, stop it, stop it.
data, what are you sensing? <laughs> data, what are you detecting? <laughs> Come on, should I? <laughs> Come down, boys. Commander, what are you detecting? I'm not commander, am I? Yeah, commander data. I'll screw it. Start again. Hello, Jordy. <laughs> 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 Atomic particles. The electron was first discovered by a British scientist named J.J. Thompson in, a, in an experiment. What it is? <laughs> <laughs> Using a fixed target, whereby the particles from the Cockcroft Walton hit the fixed target, there are two options of colliding. Using a fixed target, whereby the particles from the Cockcroft. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> what? what a day, what a day, what a day, Data. Yes, it was, sir. Forge, want to drink? Oh, sure, I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> can't do it the phone ring. <laughs> What a day, what a day, Dana. Yes, it was, sir. Forge, want your drink? Yeah, sure, I'll have it. Ah! No! You just... <laughs> Hello, I'm the Studmeister himself. <laughs>